What's happening, everybody? A very warm well welcome back to the Purple Couch. I'm your host, Tabila TTO, back and taking over on a new year. A very big shout out to my co presenters, who are, of course, Untanta and Usandile, who will be bringing you hot episodes every single Friday. So, what are you doing if you haven't subscribed? Do subscribe to the channel, do interact with us across all our social media platforms. We're live on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It is at Love Life NGO. The hashtag to use is still hashtag the Purple Couch. On today's exclusive episode, Episode, I am bringing you the cast of Four Colored Girls. This is a play that is directed by the legendary James Nobo. I'm going to be hanging out with the cast, chatting to them about the characters that they play, and of course, this incredible story. Enough of the chit chat, let's get into this exclusive episode. Welcome to the Purple Couch. Colored Girls is currently showcasing right here at the Joburg Theatre and is directed by the legendary James Ngobo. I'm so excited to be chatting to the cast. Joined right here on the couch by Mona Monyane, who is a renowned actress and a sensational CEO king. How are you doing, ladies, this afternoon? We're good, thanks. How are you? Amazing. Big thank you to you for taking the time to chat to me and, of course, be on the Purple Couch. Uh, can we chat about this phenomenal story for Colored Girls? What is it about? All right, so For Colored Girls is um, a collection of monologues mm -hmm. that uh, a wonderful African-American woman called Ntoza Keshange wrote as a way of just giving a voice to these disenfranchised women that she grew up around, experiences that she's had herself, and it really interrogates all of the social issues that women face mm -hmm. on a daily basis. So it ranges from relationships to pregnancies and abortions to uh, violent relationships and all of that so it's basically just an offering to black women that's what she means by colored uh, black women that really need a space to just release their truth and to speak their hearts and yeah that's in just what it's about so can you chat to us about your involvement in this and how uh, a story like this even lands on your lap I was fortunate enough to be presented with uh, with an offer from James to participate in For Color Girls. Um, and I was not within the acting space for a good 10 years at this point. And he invited me over because he had a vision of bringing this period piece, because it was written about 50 years ago, to a modern audience and modernizing it to make it relevant to the audiences that we are a part of, or at least the same age as. Mm -hmm. So not to, not to alienate time and not to make it a period piece. So he had this vision of setting it in a, in a club, sort of, and there's also a bit of a, a talk show hostiness about the way it's set, mm -hmm. because it's usually um, performed without any set at all, it's just a flat stage. So I was invited as a DJ because I can DJ and I can sing. So he's like, you're gonna act girl. And I was like, whoo! Yes, thank you, thank yeah. you very much. So yeah, so that's how I was involved. I was invited because of my skill set and his vision. And for you, Mona, how did you get involved in such a phenomenal, epic story? You know, it, it mirrors hers as well. Um, I actually took over from a sensational actress, Laura Don Velase, who got a, a bigger opportunity whilst she was supposed to go into rehearsal mode. So um, because I've worked with James previously on two separate occasions for Black History Month, he didn't trust me to just sit down and have a conversation and see if this was something I was willing to work with. And luckily, the stars aligned. It was the time, and I was like, get out. That's right. And so, yeah, I was like, absolutely. I've loved this play. I've loved uh, Tyler Perry's interpretation of mm -hmm. it in the tour film. And obviously, as a woman who empowers others, I was like, why not? Let's talk about the characters that you play. Um, how different or similar are they to who you are? Let's start with you, Seal. I play the lady in green alongside the incredible Melo, um, Melo Janie. So we play the lady in green together and that was also a very um, clever sort of fresh nuance to the piece because she's never been played separately before with two different people. I, she's, she's similar to, to me in, in ways of embodying and, 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 and taking her power back 
and standing in herself which is new to me as a person because I, I wasn't necessarily the kind of person to stand in my body and own space and take up space without apology without um, begging without trying to please anybody and standing in that dominant power because she's very much in my interpretation along with James and Melo she's a woman who knows herself and has has lost an essence of herself within the giving of herself to somebody else mm. and I've also loved that as well I've given myself to people who are not worthy of the gift of me mm. and she, she she's, she's, she's almost grappling with the sense of finding herself again but also not apologizing and not begging for herself it's a claiming back of self which is something i relate to very much with my character sounds like a very powerful woman and for you the character that you play how different how similar are you um i think there are more similarities than differences mm -hmm. so i play lady in red and uh it's this woman who knows the story of unrequited love who knows the story of having to rely on what she looks like rather than who she actually is and then who falls into the tragedy of loving the wrong one mm. right and I think that's just a story that a lot of women and it's not that it's self-blame it's just you get to a point where your conditioning and your nurturing has taught you that you're only worthy as or only as worthy as your present moment, right? So um, I think also one of the biggest things is I, I share the tragedy of losing a child with Lady Red. I know that pain and that, that bottomless well of having to really build yourself back up again. But this is what I love about how Ndozake wrote these women, is that at the end of the day, they find their rainbow. And it, for me, was a spiritual amalgamation coming into this play because it is a journey I took intentionally. Um, I think for six years, I just intentionally allowed myself to say, I'm ouch, I'm sore, this is too much for me. Um, and one of the last lines in the play, if I could just give you a snippet. It's uh, snippet, they told me, it's snippet. She says, I found God in myself and I loved her. I loved her fiercely. And that's where I am in my life, you know, where you realize that we can go through so much loss, so much pain, so much tragedy. But at the end of the day, God lives within us. And if we're willing to love what is within us, we can overcome all things. Mm. Mm. On that note, um, I want to ask you as a singer, you as an actress, how challenging was, number one, the story and also the character that you're playing? I'm tired right now. <laughs> <laughs> I could cry. Yeah. I could weep every day. Mm. And sometimes you go home and you do weep. You're like, ah, why did they do this to us? All we want is love. It's been very challenging. Mm. Um, and I think, I can't believe we still have a week. I think maybe I underestimated just how much work it takes to revisit that pain. Mm. You know, when you've, especially when you've moved forward and you're in a different space in your life, to go back and, and sit there day again day. and relive it every day and then go back to your normal life. So it's been extremely challenging, but um, I also feel like it's made us fit. It's made us, you know, it's ignited the passion to tell stories and to get out there and be more intentional. Mm. Mm. For you? As a singer? As a singer, to be fair, um, honestly, the singing elements are easy for me because that's that's what I do. So you put a mic in my hand, I, I literally become this person. I'm so chilled. Mm. So th that wasn't challenging for me. The only challenge was I generally sing stationarily. I don't move. I'm, I'm fairly stationary mm. when I sing. So that walk across when you do come and watch it, showed me flames initially <laughs> now now i've gotten the handle of it so it's just like okay there's another thing to add to my to my skill set because as a multi hyphenate there's a lot of things i do i think for me what i find absolutely crazy and just insane is that this story is more than 50 years old but we as a society we as people are still kind of living through some of those things even now you know what i mean um so for someone who why should people come and watch this play it's very simple this it's time it's time for black women to speak mm. and it's time for black men to listen because mm. what we have to say will heal them this thing of rejecting truth mm. because also 
these women take accountability for themselves. They take accountability. They're not just out there going, men are trash. Mm -hmm. No, they take accountability for the fact that they choose these men. But what of the men? You know, so it's time number one for black women to own their voices. It's time for those who are afraid to own their voices to be brave enough to hear someone else own their truth. Yeah. Mm. But most importantly, it's time for our kings to make space for us to say enough. Because as you say, 50 years, how are we still crying about the same thing? Mm. What is going on? You know, so at some point we need kings, kings to take the forefront and say, speak, where are we going wrong? And then they can lead the boys into their kingdom. Because at this stage, we are also realizing, as she says, we get triggered. We realize that as women, we have so many layers of pain to unpack. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that and still be allies to men. Mm -hmm. At some point, we need to be selfish and say, it's my time to heal, just as it's your time to heal. So for anybody who's going through that, I can't take this anymore, I need an outlet or I need perspective, this is the play that starts that conversation for you. Come with your brothers, come with your uncles, come with your dads, come with your men. You know what I mean? Come with these people so that they can understand that, oh shoot, I am actually being, what's this, common. Mm. Do you understand? What I'm doing to you, some other guy is doing in America 50 years ago. And today. And now here I am perpetuating the same pain onto you. So for us, theater is extremely spiritual and it's a healing medium. And we need our people to heal. I know that it's American said, we're doing accents, we're doing whatever, but these conversations are right here at home. Mm. It's time to confront them. See, so, anything to add on to that? If you, if you are a woman or come from a woman, come and watch it. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I don't care about your color. I don't care about which space you mm -hmm. occupy because we are also, we've also been inundated with, with stories outside of ourselves, outside mm -hmm. of our color, outside of our race, outside of our ethnicity that we've always had to pay homage to and just absorb. So it's also just a treat for people to engage with stories this powerful by this powerful rendition of the story with these powerful actors and performances and decisions that have been made and see themselves yes you know sure. what i mean just just come like you brown i'm brown yes see come through yeah. and you can also learn the accent mm. and you can also do the things mm. so please come watch please come and watch um it's live until the second the 3rd of March, right here at the Joburg Theatre in Bramfontein. Ladies, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to me and share your stories and the prep that it takes to play these incredible women that you're playing. And if anything, if you see this interview, come and watch the show.